right my dear children so in the earlier part we discussed two activities to find out the components or the things which manipulates or which change the frequency of a instrument that generates sound by the vibration of air columns so in the here we are discussing another activity to discuss the things which are essential for the vibration of for the vibration of air particles and to produce sound upon vibrating so we'll do another activity to find out the things right so here in this we are going to conduct another activity to find out the things or the ones which are important or the factors which are needed or which are important or to investigate the factors which are important for the vibration of air particles so in here you are given with this activity to investigate musical instrument that produce sound by vibrating air columns so you need six tall glass you need six you need six tall glasses six tall glasses one two three four five and six six tall glasses okay then the important thing is they should be in same size and they should be made up with the same material you know that in our market there are different types of glassy materials somewhat there, there are some things uh, there are some glasses which are in different colors and there are some designs as well so if you are going to use these glasses they should be in same size and should be made up with the same material you remember that thing when you are selecting glasses so again we need a metal spoon a metal spoon and some water so these are my six glasses and i'm going to in method or in how in uh, uh, the way of the doing this experiment is it's really simple we are going to pour some water into these six glasses remember when you are pouring down water right the height of the water column that you are going to insert in each and every glass should be different to each other so in here in the first one you can observe there is more water there is more water right the height of the water column is highest in first one and when moving from first one to sixth glass height gradually decreases height is going to decrease gradually so the method is pour water to the glasses at different levels according to the diagram now according to the diagram right according to this diagram we have to pour water into the six containers so that they have different water levels tap on the top of the glass and listen to the sounds created carefully then we have to tap okay we have to tap not that much harder somewhat slighter tap on the glass and listen to the sound carefully okay listen to the sound carefully so you can see that there are six glasses no so in each of the glass there are different level there are different levels of water when we come to the first one the number of air particles inside the glass is less number of air particles in the first glass is less it's because that height of the air column inside the first glass is low height of the air column is low so less number of 
air particles can be observed in the first glass. Then when moving forward from 1 to 6, height of the air particles or the height of the air column when moving from 1 to 6, height of the air column inside the glass is going to gradually increase. See, the height is gradually increasing. Height is gradually increasing. So, when increasing the height gradually, the number of air particles is also going to increase. You can see that the number of air particles will increase gradually when moving from first one to the sixth glass. So, when increasing the number of air particles within the glasses, you know that frequency of the sound which is created is also going to differ. So, let me remind you my children, if you take the height of the air column, when reducing the height of the air column, like in first glass, like in first glass, okay, height is very low. Height of the air column is very low. See, it's not the height of water that we are going to consider. We need to consider about the height of the, we need to consider about the height of the, remember, we are considering the height of the air column, okay. We are considering the height of air column, remember it, okay. See, we are considering the height of air column. So, height of the air column in the first one is very low. See, this one. If it, if it has very low air particles, it would vibrate very quickly and produce more intense sound. Produce more intense sound. So, when conducting this activity, we can see that when tapping on the glasses, we can hear more intense sound from the first glass and the intensity of the sound is getting reduced gradually when moving from first one to the sixth one. Right my dear children, then let's move on to our laboratory and we'll conduct this experiment and we'll see like what kind of a sound can be heard when we are playing this or when we are tapping on these glasses by using that spoon. Okay, so we'll conduct the activity and we'll write down the observations and conclusions after that. Right, my dear children, now I have prepared uh, five beakers in here. Now you can observe that each of the beaker contains different amounts of liquids. Here I have used colored water so that you can get the observations more clearly. Right. So here, when you observe this beaker, you can, you can see that it contains more amount of water, means the number of air particles inside the beaker is somewhat less, not somewhat less actually. Uh, when you take the number of air particles within this beaker is it's very small as, it, as the length of it is somewhat less. So you can observe when I am moving from my right to left hand side, you can observe the length is getting increased gradually. So, this one contains a greater length and it contains more air particles. This contains more, more air particles at, as it has a greater length of the air column. So, this one has a shorter, a shorter length means it contains less number of air particles. Now, by using this spoon, I am going to tap on each these beakers and you should hear the sound which generates and you have to identify the differences. Okay, now I am going to tap and we will see what are our observations.
once again i am going to tap so you have to listen for uh, you have listened to the sound you have to listen to the sound very carefully and then we'll find out the differences so i'll use these two only i'll use this one and this one compare the differences very carefully So you could hear in this beaker when I'm going to tap a good intense sound could be heard but when I'm tapping to hear the intensity of the sound is somewhat lesser than this thing once again see so here more intensity here less intensity so this one produces more intensity because when you take the length of the air column so length of the air column in this beaker is very less so it it can produce more number of vibrations or more frequency within unit time period so if you take the frequency of this beaker the frequency of this one the frequency of this beaker when i'm going to tap it's going to emit a good frequency so thereby the sound getting sound which is produced in this beaker is somewhat intense than this one so in the, this one in, when you take this beaker this beaker contains large number of air particles so if it can, if it is going to contain large number of air particles then this beaker will be able to produce a less intense sound so when tapping on each these beakers you could hear we can generate different types of sounds right now you know that each of these beakers are made up with the same material they are made up with glass and we have poured the same liquid we have poured li colored colored water into each of these beakers so the materials which made and the materials which are inside it is not going to change only thing with the, which is getting changed is the height of the air column which contains inside each of these beakers so when changing these heights we can see that the number of air particles are going to increase or else decrease so in that situation we can change the frequency of each of the sounds which is getting emitted when i'm going to tap on these beakers so once again this beaker which has the lowest height is going to produce more intense sound as it contains less number of air particles this beaker which has high higher length or more number of air particles or length of the air column in this one is somewhat greater than this one so in this situation in this beaker this beaker is going to produce less intense sound due to having more number of air particles so it's obvious to us that when changing the length of the air column we can change the frequency of a sound in an instrument that generates sound by the vibration of air columns when when increasing the length the frequency produced is low means the intensity of sound is also low when the length of the air column is decreased or when we are going to decrease the length of the air column we can generate more intense sound it's because that the frequency of vibration is somewhat greater rather than the other case so this is how we can change the frequency of a sound in an in a musical instrument that generates sound by the vibration of air columns so what is my observation then different types of sounds are created with varieties when tap into each glass we can hear different types of sound when tapping on each glass it's because their frequency is getting changed so in my conclusion when changing the length of air column 
frequency changes. The frequency is going to change when changing the length of air column. And sounds with different varieties could be heard. Sounds with different varieties could be heard when changing the length of the AR column. Okay, right. So, you are given with another assignment. See, make a whistle using tender coconut leaf, blow it while changing the length. So, here you can take a coconut leaf and you can wrap it like if you have if you guys have your grandfathers then they would know how to make this coconut leaf whistle it's really simple it's like this it's like this you have to wrap it like this one on each other so that they have folds like this then you have to blow it this is the end this is the end and we are we need to blow it in here so when blowing it right you can change the length of it you can change the length of it length of it by pulling and pushing it okay length of it will increase or decrease upon pulling and pushing it so Make a whistle using tender coconut leaf. Blow it while changing the length of its reeds. Reeds are the that folds. Okay. And listen to the sound carefully. And listen to the sound very carefully. So record the change of the sound according to the change of the length of the reed. So let's see what happens in here then. What's going to happen in here? So I'll erase this thing and I'm going to show you what's going to happen in this assignment. We'll see Pute. So we'll see the, my children. You'll see my children what happens. So this is my this is my so my dear children, this is my prepared whistle by uh, using the coconut leaves, by using the coconut leaves. And in this instance, I have a greater length. I have a greater length. And this is the second one. By using a less length, I'm going to prepare my instrument by using a less length in the second one I am using a lesser length one right in the second one we need to use a less length one remember it right so like this less length one should be used for the second one okay like this okay so now this is my end we need to blow it in here to observe the sound emitted by the two different whistles if you, you if you want you can make two of them with a lengthier one and a shorter one and you can listen the sounds emitted by those two carefully so when blowing it when i'll name these two as one and two first so this is first one this is second one so when blowing the first whistle the first one you can hear less intense sound you can hear less intense sound when blowing the first whistle so here in number one here less intense sound is given
less intense sound is given. In the second one, definitely in the second one, you should hear more intense sound. So in here, more intense sound is given. Right, less intense sound and more intense sound is given. So what's the reason for this thing? Like in the earlier case, when increasing the length, the number of air particles within the vessel is going to increase or the air column, length of the air column is going to increase. When increasing the length of air column, frequency is going to decrease. Frequency is going to decrease. Frequency is getting lowered. As there are more air particles, it's difficult to vibrate. So the number of oscillations that's going to occur within unit time period is also going to decrease. When decreasing these number of oscillations that occur within unit time period, the frequency is also going to reduce. If the frequency is less, the intensity of the sound is also less. So here it has less frequency. In the second instance, in the second whistle, in the second whistle, length is less. So the number of air particles or the height of the air column is low and it has less number of air particles within the structure. So, less number of air particles will vibrate very quickly. Less number of air particles will vibrate very quickly. So, if the number of vibrations are going to increase, then the frequency is increasing. When increasing the frequency, intensity of the sound is increased. Okay. So, this is our conclusion from the assignment in here, right? Okay. So, here you are given with another activity. Now, in this activity, we will see to change the frequency or changing the frequency of a sound created by an instrument which generates sound by the vibration of air columns. So, now in this case, we are checking how to change the frequency of, a, of an instrument which generates sound by the vibration of air columns. Okay. So, in earlier situations, we studied how to change the frequency. We need to change the length of the air column or the we need or we need to change the number of particles, number of air particles inside the instrument in order to change the frequency. Right. Now, in this case, you are given with these instruments. We need to find out these instruments. What are these instruments? One is enough. Huh? You will be needing only one instrument. It can be any kind of a whistle or else a flute. Flute is more accurate in here. Flute is the most accurate instrument when conducting this activity. Okay, so we will be needing a flute. Flute is the instrument that we need. Okay, right. So, in the flute, there is a, inside the flute, you can observe in the flute, there is a hole somewhat far from the other six holes. So, here you can observe six holes 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. There are 6 holes in the flute and the other than these 6 holes, there is a one hole somewhat far away from these 6. So, the air is blown onto this far away hole which is named as A. So, we keep our fingers like this and we blow on the right 
and we blow on there are some uh, flutes like this we can play and there are some flutes which we can play like this okay so when blow in it we are changing the positions of our fingers like this okay we are changing the positions of our fingers now here we need to get a flute and we need to play it to identify the sounds which emitted by the flute. So, right my dear children, so we will see how to conduct this activity or what are the steps that we need to follow in conducting this activity then. So, here first of all we have to close all the holes of the flute. So, we have to close all the holes of the flute. So, I told you that uh, the holes of the flute is being named like this. See, what are the names? B, C, D, E, F and G. But most of the times, these, these things are not being marked on a flute that we are going to obtain from a market. It's because that most of the times flutes are being used by musicians so they would know which hole to open and which one to close so by that way they have a sound knowledge in manipulating these sounds very well so they so most of the times these uh, these marks or these uh, musical notes will not be marked on a flute right and there are different types of flutes as well right normally we are blowing like this right we are playing a flute like this but there are some flutes which we can play like this so we can blow it in here there is a opening and we can blow it to that opening so by that way the sound is going to emit right so there are different types of flutes you can use any of them here we are going to change what will happen to the frequency when increasing or decreasing the vibrational air column inside it okay so first of all first step is we need to close all the holes of the flute and to check whether what kind of a sound or check what kind of a sound is going to emit kind means here you have to observe the uh, intensity of the sound okay uh, so you have to close all the holes of the flute provided to you and play it then listen to the sound carefully that's the first step so in the next one open the holes open the holes so i told you that uh, most of the times these are haven't been marked so however you have to close and open these holes right these holes in the flute gradually one at a time right and observe the sound which is going to emit when you are blowing it then listen carefully to the to find whether there is a change in the sound when each hole is opened and closed and we have to record the observations. So it's quite simple to carry out this experiment. We take a flute and we are going to blow it, blow on it. First of all we are closing all the holes and we are going to blow. Then we can open one at a time or two or three at a time then we can blow on it to check what kind of a sound is going to emit on the flute okay so now let's head on to the lab and we'll continue the experiment we co will conduct the experiment we'll head on to the lab and we'll conduct the experiment and let's see what are our observations right my dear children now i have a flute with me right so in this activity we are going to observe how to change the frequency of this flute. So you know that flute is a musical instrument which generates sound by the vibration of air columns. In this flute you can observe there are several holes like in here you can observe several holes and this is a special type of a flute. So uh, there is a ending that we need to blow air and if you want you can blow it in here also like in here 
So, now let's see how to change the frequency of this flute. So, now I am going to blow to this uh, flute so that you can observe the sound. First of all, I am going to blow for the, uh, to the uh, flute by opening all of these holes together. I am not going to close any of these. I am just going to keep my hand still. Then I am going to blow it. Then you observe the sound very carefully. So you could hear a same type of a sound is getting emitted. When you are not opening or closing any of these holes. Now what I am going to do is I am going to use my fingers. I am going to use my fingers. And I am going to close each of these holes by keeping my fingers like this. Then I am going to blow on the, uh, then I am going to blow on the flute and while I am blowing, I am going to change the positions of my fingers so that the holes may open and close. So in that case, you have to observe the sound very carefully and you have to listen, then you have to identify the differences. So let's see. You could see that when I'm longing, when I'm longing on it, right? When I'm changing the fingers, you can see different types of sounds could be generated when I'm changing the positions of my fingers. Means that when I'm opening and closing each of these uh, holes, we can hear different types of sounds. So when you take a flute, when you take a flute, children. We can observe these holes. So when I am blowing on it and when I am closing these holes like in this case, right? The number of air particles or the length of the air column which trapped inside the flute is going to differ from time to time. So due to change in that, number of air particles within the flute or the length of the air particle length of the air particles within the flute i can change or i can manipulate the frequency of the sound which emitted by the flute so here we use these holes to change the length of the air column so you know that there are seven musical notes right in any kind of a tone or in any kind of a music, there are seven musical tones or there are seven musical notes. So these musical notes are also being played by closing and opening these holes one at a time, right? So the musicians, they use these holes to generate music or to generate uh, musical notes by closing and opening the holes of the flute. So that's how the flute, flute can be used to generate different types of sounds or different musical notes. Here we are closing and opening the holes by using our fingers. By that way we are changing uh, the frequency by changing the length of the air column. That's how the flute is going to produce different types of sounds or different forms of sound. Right. So. Uh, I hope that you took a sound knowledge about the flute. So this is how to change the frequency in a musical instrument that generates sound by the vibration of air columns. In a flute, we change by closing and opening the holes by using our fingers. Right, my dear children. So we conducted the activity and you could observe that different sounds are going to emit due to change in the length of the vibrating air column inside the flute, right? So we could hear different 
sounds with different intensities when we are playing the flute. So here we change the frequency by changing the length of the AR column which vibrates. So to increase or to decrease the length of the AR column, we used our fingers to close and open the holes which contained inside the flute. So our observations was quite clear. When there is more air particles inside the flute, when there is more air particles inside the flute, the vibrational frequency is going to reduce and the intensity of the sound which is produced is also getting reduced. When there is less number of air particles within the flute, the vibrational the vibrations, the number of vibrations or the frequency is going to increase and more intense sound could be heard. So that's how a flute change the frequency when it is going to produce sound. We can change the length of the AR column and when changing the length of the AR column, we can observe that the flute is going to produce less or more intense sounds right so we'll write down the observation i'll take the side somewhat up to write down the observation so our observation was quite clear when changing so Instead of changing, I'll use when length of the air column, when length of the air column in the flute. is high less intense sound less intense sound was produced So, when length of the air column in the flute is high, less intense sound was produced. Okay. So, the second step is, this is the first one. Now, this, uh, this is the second one. When, when the length when the length of the air column in the flute is low, more intense sound more intense sound was produced. So this is our final observation from the activity, right? So this is what we observed when we conduct the activity. So when the length of the air column in the flute is high, less intense sound was produced. When the length of the air column in the flute is low, more intense sound was produced. These observations are obtained because of changing the frequency of vibrations inside the flute due to changing the length of the air column. Right. Now let's move on to write down our conclusion then. Right. So my conclusion is, you can write, I'll move on to the next slide. So my dear children, this was our final 
conclusion. Now I'm going to write it in here, right? Now I'm going to write it in here. So conclusion is when length of the AR column when length of the AR column is high frequency 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 when length of the air column is high frequency reduces frequency reduces and when reducing the frequency intensity reduces therefore Therefore, intensity, therefore, intensity of the sound is less. Right? When length of the air column is high, when length of the air column is high, frequency reduces. Therefore, intensity of the sound is less. Then in the second case we can write, in the second case we can write when length of the air column, when length of the air column is less frequency frequency increases frequency increases when length of the air column when length of the air column is less when the length is less frequency increases therefore intensity of the sound Therefore, intensity of the sound, therefore, intensity of the sound is high. So, this is our final conclusion. Like in the earlier case, we can write the conclusion in detail like this. Okay, so this is how to change the frequency of an instrument that generate sound by the vibration of air columns. Okay, my dear children, then we're going to move on for the next part. So in the next part, we are discussing on the instrument or we are discussing about the instruments. In this part, we are discussing about the instruments that generate or that produce sound by the vibration of strings or metal rods okay that produce sound by the vibration of metal strings or metal rods so the most common instrument that we have in this category is the guitar i think that all of you have get, uh, that all of you have observed a guitar most of you have played a guitar right so in here we are discussing how to change the frequency how to produce the sound or how to change the sound in a guitar or else in an instrument which produce sound by the vibration of strings or metals so here also you are given with a small bit of an activity right how to create an instrument which generates sound by the vibration of strings so you are given with several 
materials in here to conduct the activity. So you will be needing these things. You will be needing a wooden sheet. Wooden sheet. You will be needing a wooden sheet. Then a tin. A tin. Some iron nails. Some iron nails. Then you need some bolts. Bolts. And we need the nut also. Bolts and nuts. Then we need here we need a plastic a plastic sheet okay a plastic sheet plastic sheet and we need strings okay here we are going to make a, a string instrument no instrument which produce sound by the vibration of strings ne? so here we need several strings when you are selecting strings make sure that you need several strings with several thicknesses okay it should have different thickness thickness of the string should be changed from string to string okay so we need several we need several strings with several thicknesses. So, different strings with different thickness. different thickness different strings with different thickness this is these are the ones we need right my dear children so these are the instruments we need once again we need a wooden sheet a tin iron nails nuts and bolts a plastic sheet different strings with different thickness so now we'll move on to see what are the steps that we need to follow in making this instrument so this is our instrument which we produced by using those materials so here first of all we need to fix the iron nails to the plank or plank means the wooden sheet we need to fix the iron nails to the plank or the wooden sheet as shown in the figure and tie the wires to them right now first of all we need to tie the wires wires means the strings we need to tie the strings onto the wooden plank so take the other ends of the wires or the strings through the holes of the tin can fixed to the plank now this is the tin which fixed to the wooden plank or the wooden sheet we have to fix it, fix it. you can use iron nails in fixing this right uh, when doing this experiment you can get the support of your teacher or else your parents if you have elder brother or sister you can get the support of them as well right so after that pass the wires through the slots made on the plastic sheet which is placed on the plank send the wires through the holes made on the plank now 
now we have fixed the st in strings like these no this is the way which we this is the way which we use the strings to fix on to fix on the plank okay now my dear children we need to get that plastic sheet and the plastic sheet should be cut into shapes like this so that the strings would pass easily through this plastic sheet and you have to insert that plastic sheet to the metal so to the uh, metal strings like this way then you should be able to move that plastic sheet here and there on the wooden sheet okay that's the whole idea of having the plastic sheet plastic sheet is used to increase or decrease the length of the strings right now uh, in the next step then we have to take these wires through the slots made on the last made on the wooden sheet get them like this and tie on the bolts you have to tie it on the bolts very tightly right when you are doing this you can you definitely need to get the help of your elders okay so wind the wind around wind the wires around the bolts which are fixed to the plank make sure the lengths of the vibrating part of the wires and their tensions can be adjusted now that's why we need to use the nuts and bolts so we can insert a screwdriver and we can rotate it so by rotating that screwdriver we can change the tension of the strings which vibrates and also by using that plastic sheet which inserted to the here by moving that plastic sheet here and there we can change the length of the string which is going to vibrate in this instrument so here we are we, we, we should have an ability to change the length of the vibrated part and the other thing is the tension of the vibrated part okay right so in the next thing after you have prepared this instrument play the instrument which you have made adjusting the wires and identify the change of sound uh, now we have to do what we have to play this instrument and we need to identify the change in different situations okay we have to identify the change in different situations we have to use the instrument we have to use the strings with different thickness right and the tension of the wires or the strings should be adjusted right we are connecting these so that the wire tension can be adjusted and the other thing is that by moving the plastic sheet here and there we have the ability to change the what the tension of the string okay so this is our activity so here we are building up an instrument that generates sound by the vibration of strings right now this is our instrument then i hope that you may do this thing in your home right you do this thing in your home and you do the exact thing like this to identify the sounds emitted by vibrating string instruments right my dear children so this is the way of doing the activity now let's head on to the lab and we'll see how to get the observations from this activity right my dear children now this is the instrument that we have prepared 
So here you can see the tin and uh, I have used a board, the nuts and bolts which can be used to increase or decrease the tension of these strings and I have fixed the strings onto the board by using these nails, see, right. So these are the strings which runs through the tin. So this is that ruler which I have used. This is the ruler which I have used. Here you can observe, right? Here you can observe. I have cut some several, um, you know, like holes to trap the strings so that if, uh, I can change the tension very uh, easily. So now I'm going to insert this thing, this uh, plastic ruler inside the, inside the instrument that we have created and now you can see that when I'm going to move this ruler towards that bolt sides, the tension of the each string is going to increase. And, I'm when I, and when I'm going to take this somewhat forward towards the tin, I can see or you could observe, see the tension is less. It has less tension. And now I'm going to move to a middle position like this and I'm going to show you how can we could hear the sound when I'm vibrating these each string. So let's hear to the sound emitted by each of these strings first and let's compare the differences and let's see how the sound which emitted by each of these strings would change due to change in like what kind of a factor. So let's see. So listen to the sound very carefully. So you could hear actually the uh, even though the string is vibrating right we could hear very small sound the sound is very smaller smaller means the intensity is very much low right in some cases even though the string is uh, vibrating we couldn't hear any kind of a sound see in this thing I don't think that you can hear a loud sound so in this case, see, we can see that the string is vibrating. But the sound which is emitted is very less. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the tension by taking this ruler towards the bolts. And now it has a good tension. You could see that the strings are well tightened. Then I'm going to play or I'm going to vibrate these strings and let's see like what kind of a sound we can hear. Right. You could see a more intense sound could be heard when I'm pulling this thing towards the bolts to increase the tension. See? So when the tension is going to increase in these kind of instruments, when I'm increasing the tension in these instruments, so these are the instruments that generate sound by the vibration of strings. So in these instruments, when I'm increasing the tension, you could hear a good intense sound. So the reason for changing that sound intensity is the change of frequency. When changing the frequency, we can change the intensity of the sound. So when increasing the tension of each of these strings, we can change the frequency here. We can increase the frequency. Frequency could be increased by 
increase in the tension of each of these strings. So when we when you are going to decrease the tension, when you are going to decrease the tension of the strings, so in that kind of a case, the frequency is going to decrease and also the intensity of the sound is also going to decrease. So tension is a factor which can be used to change the frequency in these kind of instruments. Now in this case I have used similar kind of a length, uh, similar kind of strings. So if you can use different uh, strings with different thickness then in that kind of a situation also you can change the frequency right. So in this case I have used only one uh, only uh, only a string that has a even thickness so in here i could change only the tension to change the frequency in these instruments so these musical instrument can be prepared at your home or in your school if you want you can take different uh, different strings with different thicknesses so in that kind of situation also you can increase or decrease the uh, decrease the frequency and the intensity of the sound. So my dear children in this activity we observe that how we can change the tension of a string to change the frequency of a sound. So when increasing the tension of the string we could hear a good intense sound means that the frequency is high when the tension is high. So when we are reducing the tension of the strings, in that kind of case, the sound which is emitted is somewhat lower or, mean, or, that, or means the intensity of the sound is somewhat less. It's because that the frequency is getting reduced when you reduce the tension of these strings. So try to build up these musical instrument at your home or at your school and check whether how can you change the frequencies right then so we'll identify somewhat more factors how could how to change the frequency somewhat other than the tension let's see what are the other factors uh, on how to change the frequency of these kind of instruments in which we generate sound by the vibration of strings so our observation was quite obvious so when vibrating a string that has a greater thickness when vibrating a string when uh, vibrating a string that has a greater thickness the frequency generated is less actually here we can say that not the frequency it's an observation no so we are hearing the sound or we are listening to the sound which emitted by the source. So here we can listen or we, here we can observe a sound that has a lower intensity. When playing a thicker string, we can hear a sound with a lower intensity. Right. So my observation. So I'll uh, remove this point. Let's remove this point and I'll write down what are my observations, several observations in point wise. Okay. Now the first one is the thickness. Number one, when vibrating when vibrating thick strings sound produced sound produced was less intense was less intense 
sound produced was less in intense. Intensity of the sound which generated when vibrating thick strings is very low. That's our first observation. Second one. When increasing, when increasing the length, when increasing the length of the string by pushing and pulling that plastic part, we can increase the length. So, when increasing the length, okay, when increasing the length, of the vibrational string when increasing the length of the uh, string which vibrates. So, when increasing the length of the string which vibrates Less intense sound is produced. Less, less intense sound is produced. Okay. So, once again, when vibrating thick strings, sound produced was less intense. When increasing the length of the string, which vibrates, less intense sound is also produced. Once again, number three. Now, the third one, third one is here. Now, we, in the first one, we took the thickness of the strings. In the second one, we took the length of the vibrated part, right? We took the length of the vibrated part. Now, by changing the position of, the, of those bolts, we can change the tension of the vibrated strings. So, when, when the tension, when the tension of the strings When the tension, when the tension of the strings is low, when the tensions of the strings is low, when the tension of the strings is low, right? Here I use, I will use when the tension of the string. When the tension of the string is low, right? When the tension of the string is low, Sound produced sound produced was less intense. So these are my final observations from the activity right here i have written down only the uh, reduction parts right here i have written down only the reduction parts so you could observe that when increasing or when you take the reverse of these conditions reverse of these conditions the intensity is going to increase okay so when vibrating thick strings the sound produced was less less intense when increasing the length of the string which vibrates less intense sound is produced when the tension of the string is low sound produced was also less intense in reverse case you can write like this when vibrating instead of thick thin strings when vibrating thin strings then we can hear more intense sound when decreasing the length of the string when decreasing the length of the string 
we can hear more intense sound when increasing when increasing or when the tension is high when the tension is high or when increasing the tension of the string in that kind of situation we can hear more intense sound that's the reverse observations right for these conditions those are the reverse ones okay so i have written only the reducing part so i think that you may you that you know that you understood the part of the increasing one as well right so what is the reason for our observation what is the reason for these observations then what happens in these cases is the thickness of the strings thickness of the strings the length of the strings length of the string and the tension of the string tension tension means the tightness of the string right so these are the factors that controls the frequency in an instrument that vibrates in an instrument which produces sound by vibrating strings or metal pieces so these are the factors what factors thickness length of the string or the metal plate and the third one is the tension of the string or the metal plate so those are the factors which controls the frequency of these kinds of instruments which generate sound by product by the vibration of strings or metal plates okay so these three factors can be changed to change the frequency these three factors can be changed to change the frequency so in my conclusion i can write finally my conclusion i'm going to write what happens when changing what happens when changing these three factors so we'll write one by one we'll write one by one we we'll erase these three, three points then we'll write down one by one what happens when changing each of these factors number 1 so the first factor is thickness thickness of the string thickness of the string thickness of the string so first factor is the thickness so i told you that when playing more thick strings the sound generated is less or the intensity of the sound is less when playing thin strings we can hear more intense sound so intensity of the sound is increasing due to increase in the frequency intensity of the sound is increasing due to increase in the frequency so we can conclude that when increase in thickness or when vibrating thick strings sound generated is less intense because the vibrational frequency reduces when vibrating thin strings when vibrating thin strings we can say that the frequency produced is high because those strings are going to produce more intense sound okay so that is my conclusion then so we'll write it down so conclusion i'll use a different color to write down the conclusion 
when thickness when thickness is high frequency frequency radius frequency radius when thickness is high frequency radius so therefore intensity of the sound is low sound intensity sound intensity is low sound intensity is low then the next point we can write when when thickness is less when thickness when thickness is less less thickness being thin strings when thickness is less means thin frequency frequency increase frequency increase so when increase in the frequency intensity of the sound increase sound intensity is high sound intensity is high so this is how does thickness affects the frequency so when thickness is high frequency radius so therefore sound intensity is low when thickness is less means when it is thin the frequency increase and the sound intensity is also high so this is how does the thickness is going to affect for the frequency of a string instrument or else an instrument which produce sound by the vibration of strings so we'll come to the next one number two the second factor second factor is tension of the string tension of strings so under that number one we can write when tension is high i hope that i hope that you remember what do you mean by the tension tension means the tightness of the string in this case okay so when tension is high when tension is high when tension is high when tension is high so what happens when increasing or when the tension is high when tension when tension is high sound produced or else we can say that the frequency when tension is high the frequency is also high frequency is high therefore therefore intensity of the sound is also high intensity 
of the sound is high. In the next one we can write when the tension is low or when the strings are not tightened, when the, when the strings are loosely arranged. So when tension is low, when tension is low, the frequency the frequency is low, the frequency is low, less intense sounds are produced, less intense sounds are produced. Right, so this is the second factor, right, tension of the string. So when tension is high, frequency is high. So therefore, intensity of the sound is also high. In the second case, when tension is low, the frequency is also low. When tension is low, frequency is also low. Means that when tension, when reducing the tension, less intense sounds are produced. So this is our second factor that affects the frequency of a instrument which generates sound by the vibration of strings. So I'll move on to the third factor. I'll take the slide somewhat up to write down the third factor. Number three, my third factor is I'll use the third, I'll use the usual color, blue one, third factor. So first factor was the thickness, second factor I took as the tension. Now the third factor, length of the string. Length of the string. Length of the string. So, we can write like this with the length, um, take a point, when length is high, when length is high, when length is high, right, it's difficult to vibrate, oscillations reduce, so therefore, vibrational ability reduces and the frequency also reduces means that when increasing the length when length is high those strings are going to produce less intense sound when length is high frequency frequency is low Less intense sound, is produced. So this is the first step. When length is high, frequency is low and less intense sound is produced. Then the second one, when length is low or when length is decreased, when length is low, when length is low or when length is decreased, frequency frequency is high. 
those two those these two factors are oppositely related to each other right when length is low when length is low frequency is high high intense high intense high intense sounds are produced right so this is the third case the length of the string so when length is high frequency is low less intense sound is produced when length is low frequency is high and high intense sounds are produced so these are the three factors that determines the frequency of an instrument which generates sound by the vibration of strings right so this is our final conclusion from the activity so my dear children these are the main factors which controls the frequency of a vibration right frequency of a vibration in which type of vibrations or in which type of sounds these are the factors which can these are the factors which controls the frequency or the intensity of sound which produced by the vibration of strings or by the vibration of metal parts so in the next chapter we'll discuss further things related with these musical instruments that produce sounds by the vibration of strings or metal plates.